What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Let's continue with 100 years of world championship fights. I already went over this fight with you in the last video, but let's go over it once again. March 25th, 1927. 18-year-old Tony Canzanelli on the scales, draws in 10 rounds at the Coliseum in Chicago with 23-year-old Charles Bud Taylor. It was for the vacant NBA Bantamweight Championship belt. Now, Charles Taylor walked into the ring with a record of 87 wins. 16 losses, 12 draws, and 25 knockouts. Tony Canzanelli walked into the ring with a record of 34 wins, one loss, four draws, and nine KOs. And Charles Bart Taylor was born July 22, 1903. He died March 9, 1962. He was 58 years of age at the time of his death. He stood five foot five and a half inches. He was a band of weight with a 66 inch reach. Fought from 1920 to 1931. He had total boss of 100 fights. 70 wins, 22 losses, and 37 knockouts. He was in a ring with fighters such as Eddie Shea and Abe Goldstein, Joe Lynch, Major Smith. Tony Canzanelli was born November 6, 1908. He died December 9, 1959, New York. He was 51 years of age at the time of his death. He stood 5 foot 4 inches. He was a lightweight and had a 65 inch reach. Fought from 1925 to 1939. Had a record of 171 total bouts, 137 wins, 24 losses, 44 knockouts, and 10 draws. He was only stopped one time in his career. He fought 18 world champions, six Hall of Famers. He was in a ring of fighters such as Battling Shaw, Billy Patrol, the Fargo Express, Kid Chocolate, and Baby Aris Menzi, as well as Al Singer. June 6, 1928, Philadelphia light heavyweight Tommy Lockwin is dropped twice in the first round with Leo Lomsky, only to get up off the floor to defeat him and retain his world light heavyweight championship crown. 15 rounds, New York, Madison Square Garden. The manager was very furious with him because he told him to keep his hands up. That referee was Dave Miller. Now, Leo Lomsky, originally from Oklahoma, moved to Washington while he was two years old. And after breaking his hand more than 13 times, he was soon retired from the game of boxing. Tommy Lockman, his name is Thomas Patrick Lockman. He was born November 29th, 1902, Philadelphia. He died July 7th, 1982. He was 79 years of age at the time of his death. He would reside in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He had a 73-inch reach. Stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches. He was a light heavyweight champion. He was in the Hall of Fame in 1956. International Hall of Fame in 1991. He had a record of 95 wins, 24 losses, 45 no decisions, and one no contest. He was in a ring with fighters such as Jimmy Slattery, Roland Todd, Mike Mateague, Leo Lomsky, Harold Mays, George Carpentier, Mickey Walker, Harry Greb, Tuffy Griffith, Al Latour, who was a very good Jewish heavyweight, by the way. Steve Hamis used to step on your feet when he punched you. Leo Lomsky. His name was Leo Joseph Lomsky. He was born October 27, 1903 in Oklahoma. He died November 12, 1975. He was 72 years of age at the time of his death. He stood 5 foot 10 inches. He was a light heavyweight and had a 71 inch reach. Fought from 1922 to 1938. Had a total bout career of 146, 103 wins, 27 losses and 40 by the knockout rule. He was in a ring with fighters such as Lee Ramage, Kingfish Levinsky, Maxi Rosenblum, Charlie Ballinger, Pete Latso, Eddie Roberts, and Ted Moore. January 13, 1928. It's a fight that took place between New Zealand's Tom Heaney and the Boston Garb, Jack Sharkey. But first, I want to go over a fight film with you between... Leo Lomsky and Philly Phantom, Tommy Lachlan. In the ring, Joe Humphreys introducing the challenger for the light heavyweight championship of the world, Leo Lomsky. And coming out of the corner from the left, the light heavyweight champion, Tommy Lachlan. Lachlan the champion, Lomsky the challenger. Lachlan weighing 174 and a half, Lomsky 171. The referee is Jack Denning. A huge crowd at Madison Square Garden. 
Leo Lonsky, the shorter of the two, out of Aberdeen, Washington. They call him the Aberdeen Assassin. Tommy Lagren, the stylist. Defending his champion in the scheduled 15 rounder. Leo Lonsky, the shorter of the two, out of Aberdeen, Washington. They call him the Aberdeen Assassin. Tommy Lagren, the stylist. Defending his champion in the scheduled 15 rounder. Lagren is managed by Joe Smith. Lonsky by Eddie Baker. Down he goes. Tommy Lagren is down. A solid right hand. He's taking the count. The championship at stake. Leo Lonsky waiting. Now he comes after the champion again. Just the opening minute of the first round. Tommy Lagren trying to keep Leo Lonsky off, and Lonsky swarming all over him. There's plenty of time left in this first round. Tommy Lagren in trouble here at the opening of the scheduled 15 rounder. Leo Lonsky has won 20 fights in succession. Lagren seems to have recovered somewhat now. Still fighting carefully against Lonsky. Lonsky a murderous puncher. Lagren trying to keep Lonsky off of that left jab. Leo Lonsky trying to finish right here and now. Down he goes again. The champion is down. Referee Denning picks up the count. But Lagren is up on his feet again. Only moments to go before the end of this first round. Tommy Lagren has been... But it's a different story from here on in. Right through the fight, Lagren came on. Came on fast during the rounds, taking full command, though Lomsky fought furiously, relentlessly. Lagren opened a cut over Lomsky's left eye in the eighth round. It bled freely and handicapped Lomsky during the remainder of the fight. In the ninth round, the patch was fixed over Lonsky's left eye, but it was a target for Lagren's left jab, and he knocked it off, the blood flowing. Lagren is fully recovered from that first round series of knockdowns. Lonsky still coming on, but Lagren has the situation pretty well in hand right now. The judges are Charlie Matheson and Tommy Flynn. And on their scorecards right now, Tommy Lagren is well ahead. Lomsky must KO Lagren if he is to win the light heavyweight championship of the world. And he almost came through with that KO in the very first round. As you see, Tommy Lagren is beating Leo Lomsky to the punch. Outbox him. Dancing away, using his superior height and reach. This is one of the great comebacks in the history of the ring, with the champion down twice in the first round, coming on strongly. Lagren still dancing out of range, still using that left jab effectively. Lomsky has not been able to score well since the second round. Tommy Lagren puffing Leo Lomsky with those good right hands. 
a boxing master in operation, Tommy Lagra. Lomsky still trying. Still throwing punches all the way, and that's the end of the fight. And a unanimous decision is announced in favor of the champion of the world, Tommy Lagra. Tommy Lagrin, one of the greatest light heavyweight champions of all time, no question about it. Beautiful performance against Leo Lomsky, Madison Square Garden. Now, Benny Bass and Rich Chapman were squared off September 12, 1927. For the vacant featherweight title, Benny Bass, his name was Benjamin Bunch, was born December 4, 1903, Ukraine. He died June 25, 1975. He was 71 years of age at the time of his death. He would reside in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He stood five foot one and a half inches and he had a 64 inch reach. Fought from 1920 to 1940. He was an amateur at the age of 16. He would have a very good amateur career. He weighed 158 pounds. Well after his career was over. But while he was in a ring, he came in at 122 to 126 pounds. Now, he had two fights as an amateur. As a professional, he had 29 losses, 72 knockouts, and he had 158 wins. He was in a ring with fighters such as Eddie Cool, December 27th, 1933, February 18th, 1935. Mike Ballerino, October 17th, 1927. Eddie O'Keefe, Chick Suggs, Babe Herman, Johnny Farr, Baby Abdad, Bobby Garcia, Todd Morgan, December 19th, 1928, Madison Square Garden in New York. He would knock him out in two rounds. Red Chapman for the vacant NBA featherweight championship crown. Joe Glick and Dick Honeyboy Finnegan. Eddie Shea, August 31st, 1934. He would stop him in two rounds. Tony Falco and Frankie Garcia. Charles Bud Taylor, February 16th, 1931, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kid Chocolate, July 15th, 1931, in Philadelphia. He would lose his title to Kid Chocolate. Johnny Jaddick, December 8th, 1930. They called him Little Fish. He was very strong, very powerful puncher, was Benny Bass. February 24th, 1928, babyface assassin Jimmy McLaughlin, who is to your left. He knocks out Jewish star Sid Terrace, who's to your right. One round, New York's Madison Square Garden. Seemed like somewhat of a redemption because Sid Terrace would knock out Ruby Goldstein in the polo grounds in one round. Now, Sid Terrace's name was the Wizard of Raincraft. He was born September 26, 1904 in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He died December 1974, Miami, Florida. He stood five foot eight inches. He was a lightweight with a 70 inch reach. He had 50 straight victories as an amateur. He won a New York State Metropolitan and International and National Championships within 10 months. He ranked from February 1925 to November 1929, fought from 1922 to 1931, had total bouts of 105 fights, 88 wins, 13 losses, 12 knockouts, and he was stopped five times. As for Jimmy McLaurin, his name was James Archibald McLaurin. He was born December 19th, 1907, Hillsborough County. He died October 28th, 2004 in Richmond, Washington. He stood five foot six inches. He was a welterweight and weighed anywhere between 121 to 147 and a half pounds. He was managed by Charles Pop Foster. He was in a ring with fighters such as LaBelle La Barber. Sammy Mandel, Barney Ross, Jackie Fields, Billy Patrol. He won against Young Corbett III, the welterweight championship belt. Now, Jackie Fields, he was a very interesting fighter and individual. I met him. He fought out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Young Corbett III would take the title away from Jackie Fields. Jackie Fields would go back and forth with young Jack Thompson. But Jimmy McLaurin would take the title away from young Corbett III. Ruby Goldstein, Sergeant Sammy Baker, Al Singer, Ray Miller, and Benny Leonard. 
All key names, Hall of Fame prospects, and Hall of Famers are on his list. Babyface Assassin was a dynamic fighter, and these two would meet up February 24th, 1928. Jimmy McLaurin and Sid Terrace. Thursday, March 1st, 1928. 29-year-old Tom Heaney from New Zealand defeats 27-year-old Jack Delaney from Bridgeport, Connecticut. 15 rounds to New York's Madison Square Garden. Tom Heaney stood 5 foot 10 and a half inches. He was a heavyweight with a 72-inch reach. Came in with a fighting record of 31 wins, 8 losses, 5 draws, and 15 by the knockout rule. Now Jack Delaney stood 5 foot 11 inches. He was a light heavyweight with a 73 and a half inch reach. He came in with a fighting record of 71 wins, nine losses, two draws, and 39 by the knockout three. Now Tom defeated Jack in 15 rounds in front of an audience of over 19,000 screaming spectators. New York's Madison Square Garden. They filled up a game of 174,000. And that was some amount of money during those days. It was a tournament that has been created for the vacated championship position of Gene Tunney. Tom Heaney was known as the Hard Rock from Down Under. He was born May 18th, 1898, New Zealand. He died June 15th, 1984, in Gisborne, New Zealand. He stood five foot ten and a half inches. He was a heavyweight. Had a 72 inch reach. Fought from 1920 to 1933. Had a total bout. Career 68 fights. 37 wins, 15 knockouts, 22 losses, and six knockouts himself. Now, he was in a ring with fighters such as Charlie Ratliff, Victorio Gambolo, Max Baer, Tuffy Griffith, Jimmy Slattery, and Phil Scott. Let's take a look at that fight between Jack Delaney, Tom Heaney, Thursday, March 1st, 1928. choice in this fight at 11 to 10.
Traditionally, they touch gloves for the start of the 15th round. On the official scorecards, Tom Heaney is ahead. Ten rounds to one with three even going into the 15th. The only way Delaney can win is by a knockout. And he must know it. for the world's heavyweight title. Now, March 12, 1928, 25-year-old Johnny Risco defeats 25-year-old Jack Sharkey. 15 rounds, New York's Madison Square Garden. The referee was Billy Kidd McPartman. It was the 9-4 favorite for Johnny Risco. Risco stood 5 foot 11 inches. He was a heavyweight and had a 74-inch reach. Jack Sharkey stood 6 foot. He was a heavyweight and had a 76-inch reach. Risco walked into the ring with a 44-win fight average, 20 losses, 7 draws, and 15 knockouts. Jack Sharkey had 27 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw, and eight knockouts. Now, 10,943 screaming New York fight fans have grossed a combined income of $100,091 of their hard earned working money. Sharky believes that the blow was low. It was thrown by Johnny Risco that caused him to be distracted from fighting a cause disciplined fight while he was complaining. Risco believes he is ready for a Gene Tony match. Wednesday, April 4th, 1928, 22-year-old Max Melling, who was known as the Black Yulin, defeats 26-year-old Franz Denier, 15 rounds, to win a German heavyweight title in Berlin. The referee was Paul Sampson, and he gives the nod to the Black Yulin. Now, the Black Yulin is Max Melling, he's to your right. And Franz Denier, who is the German heavyweight champion, and he is to your left. Schmelling weighs six foot. I mean, Smelling, Smelling was six foot heavyweight and had a 76 inch reach. Excuse me. He had a total bout career of 36 fights, four losses, three draws, and 26 knockouts. Franz Denier stood six foot. He had 18 wins, five losses, and three draws with 10 knockouts. Excuse my mispronunciation. Max Smelling was the black woman. He was born September 28, 1905. And he died February 2nd, 2005. He was 99 years of age at the time of his death. I met Max Schmeling as well. He fought from 1924 to 1948. He had a total bout career of 70 fights, 56 wins, 10 losses, and 39 by the knockout rule. He stopped five times and had four draws. He was in the ring with a fighter by the name of Gypsy Daniel. In fact, they both were. Johnny Risco, who was a Cleveland Baker boy. Steve Hamus. In that fight, Steve Hamus continuously decided to step on the toes of Max Smelling before he was warned and eventually penalized. He would win a fight with Jack Sharkey on a low blow in 1930, and he would lose to him in 1932 with that same heavyweight championship belt. He would also face Max Smelling, but he would be stopped. Max Smelling would pound him with a vicious right hand. He also faced Joe Lewis. Now, Franz Denier was born June 2nd, 1902 in Germany. He died April 21st, 1969. He was 67 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Berlin, Germany. He fought from 1924 to 1929, had total bouts of 33 fights, 20 wins, 9 losses, 10 knockouts, and he was stopped four times. He was in a ring with fighters such as Primo Carnera. Pierre Charles. He was even in a ring with a fighter by the name of Bud Wagner. And he was a pretty decent fighter himself. So this fight took place Wednesday, April 4th, 1928, between Max Smelling and Franz Denier.
was for the German Heavyweight Championship belt. I will continue with 1928 in the next video. Scrapbook Box and Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Gulf Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. We'll continue with 100 years of world championship fights. Thanks for hanging there with me. Be well.